it's about to get real. What up, homies? I'm John Medina, and this is my podcast, Episode 3, coming to you pre-recorded from my living room. Today on The Just John Show, we remember internet security and password importance, anonymity on the internet, and my first app review. So I want to start the show with a moment of silence. Um, You're not listening to this show on September 11th because I didn't record it until after September 11th, but that doesn't stop the importance of remembering it. So I want to start the show with a moment of silence. As with anybody that was alive when it happened, um, I remember where I was at and what I was doing when it happened. I was in fourth grade in Miss Allwater's class, and somebody came in and talked to her for a minute, and then the announcement was made that school was going to be let out early. We didn't really know why yet. But we knew that we were getting out of school and that something happened. I got home, and my parents sat on the couch, turned on the TV, turned on the news. And I remember seeing the footage and not quite understanding that it was real. Um, It almost looked like something out of a movie. And my parents sat me down and explained what happened, you know, that some bad people had essentially stolen some planes and did some bad stuff, tried to kill some people. And it took me a few years before I truly understood what it really meant. I mean, I knew people had died and that someone had attacked the United States, but I didn't fully understand what it meant. But I do remember that I learned something really important that day. I learned what it meant to be an American. On that day, it didn't matter what color your skin was, if you were rich or poor, what political party you were affiliated with. It didn't matter if you were gay or straight. It really didn't matter. All that mattered was that we were Americans and that we cared for each other. I watched as police officers firefighters and EMTs and even just volunteers off the street dropped everything to go risk their lives with the hope of saving just one more person. Saving somebody's life, another human life. And that message rang stronger than anything else to me. And it almost saddens me that 14 years later, we look back and we remember it and we... Remember the people that died, and we remember where we were and what we were doing, but sometimes we forget that it took something so bad and evil to bring us together as a United States more than anything has since. We spend our days fighting over political views. We fight over if we think it's right that gay people should be able to get married. We fight over stuff that doesn't necessarily affect most of our lives. And when it comes down to it, we're all American and we're all humans. And we all deserve to be looked at as a human being and not as somebody that doesn't see eye to eye with somebody else. We're never going to see eye to eye with everybody. That's just part of being human. We're all unique We're all different. So this week, I challenge you. I challenge you to find one person that you don't see eye to eye with on some issue. I don't care what the issue is. It could be a big issue. It could be a small issue. And I want you to talk to that person. Not about that issue. Leave that issue on the back burner. Talk to them as a human being. Find common ground. It doesn't matter if you don't agree about certain things. There is something that you can have a conversation about. And it could be something trivial. A movie, a TV show, an article you read about something to do with science or art. 
music. There's a ton of things out there. Find that thing that you can see eye to eye to them with and try to look at them from a new light. Try to look at them as another human being, as a fellow person, and not as somebody that you could never agree with on anything because they don't see eye to eye with you on one thing. So I've mentioned before that I'm horrible with segues, and I really, really am. I, I struggle. I, I don't know what to say to slowly move into the next category. Um, but I do, I actually have a confession to make. My first two shows were pretty heavily scripted. I wrote a lot of the stuff that I was going to say because I, I was scared that I wasn't going to say things correctly, that I was going to put ums, ands, buts, likes, and I means in it a lot because when I talk, my brain uses those words to fill in the gaps between what I'm going to say. So I'm really trying not to say those, but I probably will. But when I decided that I wanted to do this type of show, the first thing that I mentioned was that I wanted to do a show that would be like when I was talking to my friends late at night on the porch, out back when we're having a bonfire or on a car ride. And I don't write that stuff down. I don't script any of that. And I say likes, ands, ums, buts, and I means all the time. So my new goal is to not script anything. I have my subjects that I want to talk about, but I actually haven't written anything that I'm going to say. This is all going to be off the top of the head. So here we go. Uh, Internet security. So I hear people talk about internet security and how their stuff is so secure that no one could get into it, that it's the digital equivalent of Fort Knox. And the trouble with that is there's a front door, someone has a key to it, it's a password, and half the time there's a back door too. So like for an example, you forget your Facebook password, right? You type it in, you type it in, you type it in, you can't remember. And so they say your account has been locked for security reasons, blah, blah, blah. And you have a couple different options. You can like answer your security questions and reset your password that way. Well, there's a weakness right there. Not that most people could figure out your security questions, but if they could, they can reset your password. If you don't decide to use that method, you can have a reset link sent to you from your email. There's another break in security because what if somebody can get the password to your email address just as easily as they can get the password to your Facebook account? So another option, and I don't think it's an option with Facebook, but it's an option with a lot of other things, you can call a number and reset your password that way. So what that proves is that not only can you reset your password with your security questions or through email, but you can call someone and they can go in and do something to reset your password. So there's another security breach, and that's called a backdoor security breach because you didn't do it, they didn't get into it the normal way, but they went in through the system itself and were able to get your information. So with all three of those ways, there's there's no such thing as 100% secure. The only way that something would be 100% secure was if we could create something that knew without a doubt that it was you and that you were alive and it would let you in. And at that point, if you couldn't prove that you were you and it locked your account, that account would be worthless. No one would be able to open it. It would never be able to be opened again unless you could somehow build in a protocol that could make it see that it was you eventually. So it's a really difficult situation, but you just kind of got to understand that no matter what, someone can break into it. It may not be me. It may not be any other individual that you know but somebody somewhere can do it. And this brings about the importance of passwords. So you hear people say, don't use password as a password. Don't use your name, your dog's name, your kid's names, your significant other's names, your parents' names. And the reason why people don't want you to do that is because that information is something that if for example, I was trying to break into somebody's account, those were the first those would be the first things that I would look for. I would say, okay, well, maybe it's their dog's name or something like that, and I would try that. So that is to prevent 
human beings from breaking into your account. But the thing about it is, most of the time when someone's trying to break into your password, it's not a human being. It's a computer. The computer's just going to use an algorithm, and it's going to try every possible option to find your password. So it doesn't matter if your password is password, or if your password is x47 dollar sign asterisk l o capital m b eventually that computer will figure out that combination because for every one character there is only a specific amount of possibilities that it can be the key to password security while it can be complication from the human side is length Because for every additional character that you have in your password, it's going to take that computer that much longer to break your password. Um, There's actually a website that you can go to and check and see what your password, uh, how strong your password is. Um, A quick Google search will help you find that for sure. Actually, hold on. I'll see if I can find it and we'll do some testing here. Okay, so the pass- the website's called HowSecuresMyPassword.net, and you can type in a password, and it'll tell you how long a computer would take to break your password. So let's try something super simple, like password. Instantly, because it's the top 10 most used passwords. So let's try something a little more difficult like my last name, for example. Take two. So let's try something a little more difficult, like um, bubblegum. So it would take 22 minutes for a PC to crack the password bubblegum. But if we add a dot one at the end of that password, it would take it 110 years. So if we add another number or two, so let's do 78, it would take 333,000 years to crack that password. And the reason why is because the computer has to go through every single digit and find it and then enter it all at one time. So it's going to take it so many tries that it's going to take that long to crack the password. So while complication is a piece of it, Length is also a piece of it. And that leads me to my next thing I want to talk about, which is anonymity. An- take two. And that leads me to the next thing that I want to talk about, which is anonymity on the internet. It seems that people think that every that if a website or an app or whatever tells you that it's anonymous or secure or whatever, people believe it. Some words that I live by. If I don't want to see it on the front page of the daily newspaper, I don't say it. Whether the site thinks that tells me that it's anonymous or not, somebody can find out it's me. I mean, look at all the stuff that's happened, even in just the past year. We've had um, the Sony hacks. So somebody was able to go into a billion-dollar company and steal internal emails Um social security numbers and information on the people that worked there and have worked there in the past. And they were able to steal a bunch of movies from them that had not even been released yet. So you're telling me that someone can break into Sony, but the stuff that I put on whisper would be a hundred percent anonymous. Not likely. Another example would be that recent Ashley Madison hacks. This is a website that's specific purpose is to have affairs for married people, yet they can't even keep that information secure. Someone broke in, got all the names, addresses, and logins for all of these different people and posted it on the internet. They thought it was anonymous. They thought that no one would ever be able to know that they were on that website unless it was somebody else that was on that website that they approached and they were wrong and look what happened. 
Another example is if you have pictures and they're stored in a cloud, you cannot guarantee that those are secure either. Look at the fappening when somebody broke into all these iClouds of these famous celebrities and got pictures of them risque pictures, nude pictures of them, and was able to put them on the internet. They thought those were secure because Apple told them that they were secure and that no one would be able to get them. And they trusted it, and they were wrong. Someone was able to get them. It wasn't as secure as they thought, and it never truly will be. Another thing that people (laughs) take for granted is Snapchat. Yeah, Snapchat tells us that those photos only last for 10 seconds, but A screenshot's pretty easy, and once it's screenshotted, it can pretty much go anywhere. They tell us that those pictures are only on there for the amount of seconds that we choose as the user, but how do we know that's true? Yeah, that might be a little bit pessimistic of me, but it's hard for me to imagine that those pictures are not somewhere. Maybe it's in a certain kind of code form, like with the new Apple Pay and Android Pay systems, but they're probably out there somewhere. And there's probably somebody much smarter than me uh, that could go out there and spend some time and figure it out and get all those pictures back. So just be careful what you put on the internet. The final part of the show that I want to do is something new. So on my last show, I kind of said that I was tossing around some different ideas for some segments and some different things like that. And I actually want to do a weekly app review. Well, not weekly. I guess I should call it a showly app review app review because it may not be every week but I want to try to do one every show so the app that I've decided to review this week is called Star Wars Uprising so if you know me you know that I'm a huge fan of Star Wars I always have been ever since I was a kid and when Disney bought Star Wars I was uh, I was almost a little upset because I didn't know how they were going to handle it then I realized that It wasn't actually going to be a Disney movie. It was going to be a Lucasfilm movie. Disney was just going to back it from the financial side. Uh, That's beside the point, though. Um, So I want to do this app review. So the game is Star Wars Uprising, and it's actually a really cool game. Um, It's free, uh, iPhone and Android. While the game's free, you can still make purchases in the game, but it's not like most of the games that are free to play. Yeah, you can make purchases, but it doesn't affect your gameplay too much. I've been playing, I've got about an hour and a half into it right now, and I haven't had to purchase anything, and I haven't felt like I usually do when I play a game that's free to play, but pay to win. Uh, normally, I feel like I have a disadvantage towards the other players, because, or the pay players at least, because they get better stuff, and they have this and that. And normally, I feel like I'm just kind of almost wasting my time playing the game because no matter what I do on the free version, the only way that I can truly win the game is if I pay for it. This one doesn't feel that way, which is really nice. Uh, So you start out the game, you can pick your characters, uh, species, and gender, and then you can customize your character. Uh, So you got human and a couple other characters. I, I honestly don't remember what they were. Didn't write them down. Can't remember. Uh, the names in the game are goofy. They stick with the traditional Star Wars goofy names. Like one of the the uh, gangster that you in, end up working for, I don't really want to spoil too much, but uh, his name is Happy Dap, which is kind of entertaining. Some other cool stuff, you can actually talk to other players on the chat live so like if you were playing it and I was playing it we could actually talk to each other you can join cartels and make cartels which is just like a guild almost basically and then you can go on missions together they have cartel based missions with cartel based loot and stuff that you can get oh speaking of loot you can get loot you can get a decent amount of loot it's not going to be like a Diablo style loot where there's it's like loot for days and But it's not going to be a Destiny-style loot where you have to play for four hours to get anything that you can actually use. Uh, so it's kind of a happy medium in between. You get enough loot to do what you want to do, but you're not over-looted. One of the best things about this game is that they knew it was going to be a mobile game. 
And so they designed the missions with that in mind. Most people don't want to spend an hour on their phone taking down two missions on some game like they would on, you know, PS3, PS4, Xbox, whatever. So they made the missions like three or four minutes long, which is perfect. That's just enough time. You know, you're sitting at the doctor's office waiting or you're just trying to burn a few minutes between whatever classes or you're on a break at work or whatever. It gives you just enough time to go ahead and play a mission, maybe upgrade some gear and stuff without making you feel like you have to cut time out of your day to actually sit down and play this game. So I I think I'm going to keep playing the game. I really like it. Definitely would give it five stars. If I can get some people that watch the show to play the game with me and you guys let me know, we could maybe build a cartel or something and and, you know, as other people start watching the show and stuff, listening to the show, I guess I should say, we can build a team and it can be some kind of cool interactive thing that we can do together i think that would be a lot of fun so if you guys think that's a good idea definitely let me know and now's the time that i'm going to call upon you the listeners if you know of an app that you want me to review or just something that is cool that you think other people would be interested in hearing about or learning about Feel free to tweet it to me or email it to me, and I'll take a look at it and try to get it on the next show. This show actually turned out to be a little longer than the past ones. Maybe that's because I didn't write anything down, and I'm just kind of going off the top of the head, and so I'm talking more, um, or just talking differently. I'm talking more comfortably, not structured, and I'm not trying to rush through everything. I don't feel like I'm giving a speech. This is probably going to be more like what the lengths of the shows are going to be. I know the first two shows were pretty short, 10 minutes. I think 12 minutes was the second one. Uh, They're probably going to end up being a little longer, but I think it's going to be better. We're going to get more information out. We're going to actually be able to have a good conversation. And then when I start having some user field segments, we'll actually be able to interact. So now I come to the end of my third episode. If you enjoyed the show, please show me some love by liking, thumbs up, subscribing, sharing, or whatever it is that's used to symbolize the love of the show on the platform that you're using to view it. Follow me on Twitter, at Johnny M. Revo. Um, Something that I haven't actually explained in the show is where you can find the show other than running into it on social media, which is most likely where you've seen it up to this point. The website is justjohnpodcast.wordpress.com. You can listen to the show on SoundCloud, um, go in there and search for Just John Podcast, or you can go to soundcloud.com slash John hyphen podcast. You can also find the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash jfmedina2010. Uh, you can also find it on Stitcher. It doesn't have a personalized link for me yet, so you can just go to stitcher.com and type in Just John Podcast in the search and find it there. I'm waiting on my iTunes approval It's been quite a while, which is kind of weird, so I think I'm going to investigate that a little bit because I do want to get it on iTunes as well for you guys. You can also email the show, which is justjohnpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening to the show, and remember, without you, I'm just a weird dude talking to himself on the internet. Until next time, peace out, fam.